Hello. Welcome to the Think Big for Africa podcast. My name is Ekene Banye, your host. Today, I have a, a former classmate in university. Uh, she's a professor of uh, biochemistry. She's Dr. Eniola Bolawa, a PhD holder. Bolawa, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for now, having me. Very good. See, now let, let, me, let me make this clear. Uh, when we're in school, we usually call you Tundu, right? Yeah. So that, that's yeah. what I'm used to. And that's what I will call you all through the season. All right. Okay. okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> I'm good. with you. <laughs> Tundu, how are you? Wow. I'm fine. I'm fine. See, when I when I contacted you for this session, you told me, "Oh, you don't even remember me at all from the picture you saw on my my WhatsApp uh, page." Okay, like I told you just now, you look exactly the same. <laughs> I'm surprised to hear that. <laughs> You look exactly the same, huh? You still look that <laughs> like that that twenty-one or twenty-year-old person I knew. You know, uh, I, I I don't imagine myself uh, changing. I mean, I'm me. You know, so like 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 you said, uh, you don't. Maybe you don't remember me because you never even looked at me at all. Huh? Why? <laughs> you know, in those days, there are so many. We are so many. And, uh, you know, everybody just keeps one side of their group, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and we are so also focused as science students. So. Well, you, you, <laughs> you, 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 guys, you guys were focused. Me on the other side, <laughs> hand, I wasn't. See, I will tell you why. Why I think you don't remember me. Uh, I wasn't a good student. Okay, that's the truth. I was never a good biochemistry student. Okay, I come to class, and I stay in. We when we went to Idiaraba, where we used to have our classes from year two. I get to class. And I wait for a while. If any time uh, teachers don't come on time, do you know what I do? I go back to, to Akoka. I leave. Ah. I do that. <laughs> I did that so many times. So many times, you know? Uh, so I wasn't that a good, I, I wasn't a good student, you know? Uh, uh, and uh, you, 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 you know why in this podcast, you know, I wasn't a good student. Anyway, anyway, don't do Tell my, my audience yeah. about you and your work. I should tell you about... About your work. Your, your, see, my, see my, I like my audience to know the person they are going to listen to on this session. So tell my audience about you and your work. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Ekene. Uh, I'm an environmental toxicologist. I actually studied biochemistry with Ekene <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in those days in the University of Lagos. And then later I went back for a master's in biochemistry as well. And then after my master's, well, I waited for some time before I went in for PhD. And when I went for, in for PhD, my supervisor during my master's days then actually wanted me to continue what I did uh, during my master's. So you, you, you were telling me that your, your supervisors wanted you to continue on the path yeah. you were in. Yeah. So continue, tell, continue on that. The, um, projects, yeah. you know, and doing a PhD. But I realized that I had no motivation for that work. I had no inspiration. I could not even think of my own. I had to just do, you know, be following our 
do exactly what she tells me. I mean, I had no interest at all. Okay. So I just decided to ditch that and I wrote another proposal. Okay. On what my interest was actually in. Okay. And I submitted it, you know. And I knew it uh, that I might like, go a long way to make her annoyed with me. Because I, because I knew I said to myself, this is PhD for God's sake. I have to, I have to be inspired. I have to yeah. be motivated. Something has to keep on pushing me when the odds are up, you know. So I did another proposal and I submitted. And I was called to defend it. I defended it excellently and I was assigned to supervisors to start with. And so that was how I got into the field of environmental. So so tell, tell me, tell me, did you work with anybody I I could know in, in the department? Yes. I worked, I worked with uh, Professor Gwenle. Ah. For a long time. I worked with Professor Akiwa and Day. Interesting. I worked with Professor Akiwa and Day, yes. They were my supervisors for a long time before they retired. And then Finally, towards the end of the project, I worked with uh, Professor Ibui. I don't know whether I, I remember Ibui. I don't, was I, don't, young, I don't know. I don't know that that person. He was a young. Um, uh, I think it was when our masters that he, we actually got to know him well. Very young during our own time. Very mm. very young. Mm. You know. So along the line, he rose up to became a professor. Okay. 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 Just, so like, just like just like you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got to the field of environmental toxicology. Yeah. It's a multidisciplinary field of science. You know, yeah. we deal with exposure, exposure of environmental pollutants. We yeah. assess the rate of exposure of all these pollutants in the society, in our environment. Yeah. And then we now look at effects of these environmental pollutants. How are they affecting the human body? Now we're not we 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 can't as biochemists we don't have access to patients or, or humans mm. yeah because if you want to go through a lot of protocol yeah when you want to work with human subjects so we use rats animal models rats mouse rabbits we use them okay to assess the effect of these environmental pollutants yeah and then we report. Okay, Very so good. basically that's what I do. Water Very pollution, good. soil pollution, and good. See, this is this is this is very interesting because uh, we have a lot of pollutants. Okay, now both physically physical pollutants, which you are you are not working on, you work on chemical pollutants. Yeah, I I I, I suppose that is it. Yeah, now. When it comes to chemical pollutants, we in Nigeria and mostly in a city like Lagos, okay, nearly every family has a generator, right? Yeah. And because we have generators running almost uh, all through, throughout the day, there's so much yes. chemical pollutants in our environment. Yes. Okay. Now, yes. I, I've, yes. Always, I've always argued this, that if our scientists do some work like yours and research about the effects of these pollutants, in the in the in the human body, even though you use models like rats and mice and rabbits, okay, you can come up with the similar effects that could happen to human beings. And yes, more yes. importantly, more importantly, this is what I what I, I I don't know if you guys are doing, and I, I don't think you are doing. You write articles. In the language of people like me, eh, who know less than you, eh? we are not scientists. Even though I'm a I'm a big uh, a, a sci scientist enthusiast, okay, I'm not a scientist. But in a language that people like us would understand, 
and you publish it in a daily newspaper for ordinary people. This is something you guys don't do. You only write, yes, you only write in, in scientific journals for scientists. <laughs> Actually, we are coming to that now. Yes. It's unfortunate that it is now that is happening. Mm. I have um, some people that have a group that they call The Conversation Africa. Very good. The Conversation Africa. They go to different universities in Africa yeah. and encourage them to write up for them in layman languages yeah. for them to publish, you know? And so they got to Unilag and I've written some things for them oh. and just waiting for the publication. Okay. So we are, we're getting there. See, I, getting I, I there. hope I hope they are online because uh, I want to be able to read what they write. See, I, I read... I read, I read a lot, okay? Uh, I read a lot. I mean, every day I read for maybe six, seven hours, okay? Wow. Even though I have difficulty reading, so it takes me a long, a long time to read, but I read a lot, a lot, okay? If I show you my library, I have so many different things, and I read a lot of science things. I read mostly... Okay. 60% of my reading are science. Okay? Okay. So, so I want to see what you guys are doing because I want to, I want to be involved in the conversations. Okay? As a, okay? as a layman, I want to be involved in the conversations. Good. So, okay. so tell me. Let me t- tell me more about environmental toxicology uh, in... in, in and maybe a particular research that you are actively working on at the mo- at this moment. All right. Um, amazingly, it will surprise you to know that Lagos State is actually polluted. Really, oh, of course. really polluted. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did some work on the, our some of our rivers. The Qatar Bridge, the lagoon, Lagos Lagoon that flows under the Qatar Bridge. Yeah. I went to Makoko. Um, I went to some areas in the Korodu, you know. And um, I found out that these waters are polluted. And, and, and the fishes we get from some of these waters is what we consume a lot. Yeah. Lagos, there are big markets, fish markets around these places. And some of these fishes actually accumulate these heavy metals wow. over a long period of time. Mm. And we consume them. Yeah. You know, so most of the diseases we are having in Nigeria as, as a result of, and some of them are as a result of environmental pollutants. Yeah. I was listening to um, a podcast by a gynecologist, and he said the first thing it does when patients come to his clinic is to detoxify mm. because some of them are actually being affected by toxins yeah. in the body that's yeah. leading to infertility. When we now feed these fishes to rats in the lab, in our laboratories, oh my goodness, we saw a lot of adverse health effects wow. just for three, four, five, six months. And, 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 and are, pe- are people consume it? Every day for years and years and years. Year in, year out. Out. They were effects on the heart, on almost all the tissues. They were effects in fertility. So 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 this this, imbalances. So this kind of uh, of information need to get out to the public in a in a way that they will understand, you know, and and. Also, very important that the the health the public health people of Lagos State yes. get yes. on board. See, yes, you you, yes. you need you need their their, their buy-in to yes. to spread yes. this these stories. You know, so what are what are they, what are they doing? Yes, yes, I actually sent some messages to them. 
via the social media, but I never got any response until now. So th there's no, there's no, response. there's no uh, of official channel to get to them. I don't think so. Uh, for now, I've not gotten any except their social media handle, wow. which I wrote through, but no response, and I just dropped it. Wow. But the amazing thing in the research, which I will not leave out, was that we all now tried su supplementation. Okay. We tried supplementation with zinc tablets. Okay. And we found out that supplementation could actually mitigate this effect, mm. could reduce it to some level. Okay. Okay. So I guess, I'm guessing now, that what is helping some Nigerians could be one or two people are on supplements. Hmm. To understand, one or two people are on supplements that is actually lowering the fat. Wow. Well, uh, as a scientist, uh, as a scientist, this is what, see, guessing doesn't work in science. Okay. <laughs> because we've, we've, well, I've not taken a public um, uh, survey. Oh, like, so the yeah, survey to know. Not, yes, yeah. survey, yes, to know that what is actually happening. Exactly. You know? But from our reports in the, in the laboratory using yeah. animal models, yeah. we found that, that supplementation reduces this effect. Now, and hmm. I know that doctors sometimes preaches the sermon of supplementation. Hmm. Like me now, I use supplements. Yeah, not uh, just on my own because I found out that I do a lot of brain work and yeah. reading and other things. So I try to use supplements that aid memory, the development of, a, of the of the of the neurons, body, yeah. physicality, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, uh, I guess one or two people will be with my shoes too. Bring yeah. one or two things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. so see, in, interestingly, see, I I I see that. If we in Africa, I'm, I'm, I'm not only talking about Nigeria, if we in Africa want to develop our countries and our economies, we need a lot of scientists. You see, we yes. need a lot of scientists. And yes. see, what's are sciences doing to encourage young Africans to pursue a career in science? In, see, when I say science, big, basic science, yes, bio, biochemistry might come in, in into that too, because many of us got into biochemistry because we couldn't Bio get uh, medicine, <laughs> Um, pharmacy, <laughs> and then and then, and, and, and then those that those that went into physics and maths wanted to to study engineering. engineering. See, <laughs> now listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Medicine, pharmacy, engineering. In the Western world, in the Western world, the smartest people from secondary school do not want to study medicine, engineering, pharmacy. The smartest people in the Western world want to study physics, maths. Okay? Physics and maths are the cream of science. In our in our own in our own in our own uh, era, I don't know if it's still the same. People who study maths and physics, they get into those course, courses because they couldn't get medicine and engineering. Yes. So yes. my question is this: What are you guys, eh, the scientists, doing to encourage people, young people, to study? basic science okay um actually you know right from oh, the olden days yeah the 
most brilliant mm -hmm. people, yeah. they are the ones that would um, go into science. Yes. You okay. know, those that are average will turn to the other arts and those below average will go straight to commercial classes. Can you imagine okay. that? But, um, well, right now, I'm in one organization known as the Organization for Women in Science in the women in science in developing countries. Okay. And then once in a while, they organize science fairs, yeah. science exhibitions, yeah. in which they go to secondary schools mm. and expose the mm -hmm. girls to science. Yes. They go to secondary schools and expose the girls to science. Mm. Then um, my VC, my current VC too, organizes science fairs yeah. for students during the holidays, yeah. science summer boot camps. Yeah. Okay. And they will expose them yeah. to science okay. at such early ages, just to catch them young and develop an interest in science. Mm, mm. So that's see, it. see, I I will I will I will challenge you in particular. Okay? okay. And then maybe maybe you can also challenge your, your mates. Where okay. what, what secondary school did, did you go to? I went to Maryland Comprehensive Secondary School. Okay. It's a big school in, in Maryland, okay? Now, I challenge you to make it your annual duty to go to your own okay. secondary school at least okay. once a quarter. Once a quarter to talk to young people and encourage them to explore, uh, explore science. See, if they see, do that. Oh, do okay, that. okay. I'm, 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 a ch I'm challenging you, you in particular. Yeah. As the alumni, we have an alumni set. Yes, 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 yes. See, I'm not talking about, I'm not, I'm not talking about <laughs> your alumni. Okay, I am challenging you as a person. Okay, okay. okay I as take a the person challenge. to go and <laughs> jokes apart, jokes apart. See, it's okay. important. This is important, and. You as a scientist, a doctorate degree holder in science, okay, and a professor in science, okay, in one of the biggest schools in Nigeria. See, when kids see you and hear you talk about science, and they see your 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 smile when you talk about science, when you talk about something you are working on. They might be, hey, hmm, this woman, what, what she, what, what is she talking about? Let me look at, let me check it out. You see, for me, for me, for me, yes, uh, my interest in science started from a very young age, even though I didn't, I didn't know that. See, the first set of books I ever got from my father were a series of twelve science books. At the age of three, okay, wow. yeah, that's what that's when I started. Okay, I we still own those books in my father's library. They're still there. I I can see the 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 picture of of the of the shelf where the books are. Okay, oh. those were were my first set of books I got as a kid, and then as I grew up, I started watching a lot of science documentaries you see i have uh, the books of uh, david attenborough in my li library here okay he was my one of my my heroes when he talks about nature okay. and then uh what's his name now carl sagan okay cosmos okay. in those days so those are the things that got me interested in science. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't a good student. Okay, uh, but I'm I'm happy. I'm ha see. I will tell you, I'm very happy. I never got into medicine because I would have been bored and miserable. <laughs> you know, but but my interest in science uh, now, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make myself an educator in 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 a, a vast space of uh, 
of education because that's what I do most of, mostly. I, I, try yes. to, I try to encourage people to explore. I use that word yes. a lot because that's what I think we need our young people to do, explore. Explore what? Explore anything you don't know. Explore anything that is confusing. Explore anything that is strange. You know? We as Africans, we have something that stops us, that stops us so from, from even looking at anything that is a little bit strange. When anything is strange, instead of us to say, let, let, let me look at it and find out why it's strange. We get uh, superstitious and we run away. You see, running away will not help us. Yeah? If that thing is in your environment, all you need to do is explore. What is it? And that's what we need to do. And that's what science does. Encourage people to explore and, you know, and look at things. So uh, you guys are doing a little bit, but uh, I want you in particular, my, my former classmates, hmm, to, to, to take it as a challenge. Uh, because I, I, okay. I, 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 know, I know, Tundu, I know that if you do this, you, you, you might influence maybe one or two pe people every year to step, step out and look at this, you know, that they have okay. never talk, talked about, all right? Uh, here's my question for all Africans, all African scientists, okay? Educators and professors like you in our university. You see, I, I want all of you guys to go out trying to influence young people and to write articles in daily newspapers, you know? Because uh, writing in your scientific journals doesn't uh, influence the most important people. People like me, people like my, right. my driver, right. your drivers. <laughs> People like the, the guys, the young, the young people who like to flip the newspapers and argue politics all the time, you know? So those are the people we need to influence to get them interested, thinking constructively. Because see, science, science will, will teach people how to think. You see? Yeah. yeah. See? This is one, one thing that, that is lacking in our, in, our, in our society. Unfortunately, I will say this, even though I know a lot of people who, who bang, who, who beat me on the head for saying this. We don't know how to think. We don't know how to think. Unfortunately, I'm sure you- Maybe the environment will not encourage it. Yes. Yes, so I'm Our saying, yes, I'm saying you and your mates, scientists, need, need to encourage it. Because science, philosophy are the, are the areas of education that actually teaches people how to think. I know for, for, for a fact that uh, when you mention philosophy, uh, most of our people are, are in, a, in a society who are religious who pack, pack it in one side, eh? as if uh, philosophy is something dangerous. Eh? No, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So I, 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 need, I need you and people like you to go out, write articles, talk to young people, to help them to start thinking constructively in a way that uh, will benefit our society. So your, 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 your research, your research, how do you get funding? Wow, that's a big, uh, mm. <laughs> a big question. 
this is um, funding aspects is um, one of the areas that is injuring researchers in universities. Yeah. So many of us who are scientists are not being funded. Yes. Okay. We have some international organizations that are rolling out some grants, really, yeah. but it is very competitive. Yeah, it should be. The, 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 le- the amount of grants compared to the huge amounts of scientists all over the world. Yes. The percentage is very small. Yeah. So it's, a, it's highly competitive and only the best of the best of the best usually get it. That's it. You know, that's I'm it. The African continent, we don't. Okay. We, so, we, so, so what, what, we what should we do? What, so what should yes. we do? Um, we need more funding. We need, number one, our African governments have to rise up to the task. They yes. need to encourage us yes. as scientists. Yes. They need to encourage us they need to fund us more. Yes, that's true. Fund us more. That's true. Yes. Yes. And then the international organizations, they are really trying. It's just there's a huge number out there, but we need them to do more. Yeah. We need them to do more. Okay. So like me, I haven't won any grants. Unfortunately, I've applied for some that I didn't get, you know, and uh, my, most of my work I've been funded personally. Mm, mm, mm. personally. That, that's that's yeah. not that, that's I'm, not good at all. Yes, and because of that, you can't do much. You can't go the length you want to go. Yeah. You love to go out of this country, go to where you have sophisticated equipment in other developed labs and do a great deal of work. But when the funding is not there, you are handicapped. Okay. You'll be able to do more. Okay. So I I agree with you totally. I agree funding is a big problem. I agree that our governments are are not doing barely, they they are not doing anything. Okay. I would say they're not doing anything. Okay. But then, see, as a coach, I come back to this. What are you and Nigerian? African scientists doing to make to make the governments come to your aid to make the international donors come to your aid. See, this is what happens when your your research is not seen around the world. When your research doesn't promote any public uh, discourse. See, if if for example you have been writing in a daily newspaper for the last 10 years. Oh, see, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking. If you have been writing, if you have been writing in, 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 in a daily newspaper, maybe once a week, and you are known as someone whose research impacts public health that people have, have been using. So no, I bet you no, no international funding agency would deny you. You're right. Okay. You're right. Okay. Mm. So, so right. see, you, you have the ability to change things. Even if, yeah. even if our people in our government are not funding you, international fund, funds will come to you because once they put your name on Google, your articles, your hundreds of articles will pour out and they will read what you, what you wrote and they say, wow, this person is doing great work. You're That's right. it. See, You're right. And, and, and see, I, see I, know that, I know this for a fact. We have a lot of things that African scientists can do that will impact public health public knowledge yes all we need to do is to start writing start writing for the public not just for our scientific journals yes you're right you're right see see this is this is a simple a simple solution yes it it will take time but we need to start 
yes you're right okay so right. uh i hope i hope more and more of our scientists will do this see i know we have the people like you in this country i just i just before we went online i was just talk, talking to my 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 friend whose uh, twin bro brother died two days ago okay and we're talking about uh medical infrastructure in our country okay. and i told i i told him in the uk the nhs has a lot of nigerian trained doctors okay and they are very very good my 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 sister-in-law and brother-in-law are doctors who were trained they started their, their, their medical uh, career in Nigeria. And they're very good. Yeah. And see, many of our friends who went to school, school together, doctors, they are in this country, they are in the US, they are in Germany, and they're they are supposed to be, they are, they are some of the best doctors. Yeah. Where, yeah. Did, where did they start? They started in Nigeria. Yes. Today, the UK is going com, coming to Nigeria to recruit nurses. Yes. If if yes. if our nurses were no good, would they be, be, be doing that? No. Yes. So that tells me that that we have something that the rest of the world is is trying to crash onto. Yes. Yes. But You're then, right. but then us to develop a continent our countries we need to keep some of these people at home we cannot let everybody go and the only way we keep them at home is the ones who are home to co actually contribute things to the public so this is this is one of the this is the issue for me that I have about our scientists, okay? We are doing, we are good, but we don't get the opportunities to do the great work because we haven't done our own homework. And our, and our homework includes publication in newspapers, going out to schools having uh lectures for for the public uh our, our, our uh university uh, professors i say this all the time in this era of the 21st century uh a great uh, a, a great professor in any in any field he his or her work is beyond the boundaries of the university. Your work, yeah, your domain is mm -hmm. the whole country. A little bit of your, of your work is for the school. Your domain, your actual domain is for the country. And see, I, I bet you, if you go out to conquer the domain, you, you conquer even farther you get the funding you, you need, but it might take time, okay? But if you start now, you, you certainly get it, the funds you, you need in three or four years, you know? So what, what do you think? Yeah, you're right. I, I totally support you. Mm. We need to move out, go out of our shells and um, well, come out of. We need to come out, really. Yes. We need yes. To come out and and um, expose ourselves. Exactly. We need to do more in exposing ourselves to the world, yeah. both uh, nationally and internationally. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You're right. Exactly. You're right. So, see, I, 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 I assume this same thing is uh, what is uh, affecting investment in labs in Nigeria, you know, mm. uh, inst instead of, instead of uh, 
we instead of our, our, our labs to get funding, they would rather pick out the best uh, researchers and take them to to UK yes. and U US. See, we are, we are losing a lot. Yes, we are most of our scientists are out of the country. Yes. yes, we are losing a lot. Okay, so uh, we need we need to 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 keep our best people. You know, we need yes. it because yes. without doing that, uh, we are not we are, we are not going anywhere. You know, you're uh, right. I saw right. earlier this year when the Saudi Arabia came to Nigeria to recruit uh, medical doctors. You know, uh, our, our honorable minister for works uh, said they can go, that they can go and uh, repatriate uh, the funds. Uh, I was looking at it and say, wow, uh, this is a minister for works, a former medical, well, not a former, a, a, a medical doctor, a former governor in a country who can't even see the long term impact of what he's saying. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if I, if I, if I say this, or if even if people hear this, or if the minister himself hears this, they will say, what does that young, young man know? He doesn't know anything <laughs> because, uh, because I'm not old, because uh, I've, not been, I've not been a governor, because I'm not, I'm not a minister. No, this guy doesn't know anything. Yes, mm. yet, hey, let's see, uh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. So, uh, your publications. Uh, what kind of uh, journals do you publish in? Yeah, um, I try as much as possible to publish in high impact journals. Okay. Okay. And journals that have open access. Okay. They're That's online. Good. That's good. They're online. In there, everybody. People actually. I do have some people actually from different parts of the country contacting me concerning my work, yeah. asking questions like um, PhD students on how to go about this and that, and, you know, and I try my best to assist them, okay? So my work is online. It's, on, it's online, you go online, you find everything about my work there. Yeah. I try as much as publish, possible to publish online. Mm. So. Mm. The only so, thing, yeah, the only thing I've not been able to do is to publish in. We have we have what we call in in in, in the in our academic world. We have what we call top publishers. Yeah, very top mm -hmm. publishers. These mm -hmm. are people that uh, that uh, will give you a publishing fee of two thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, two thousand dollars, four thousand dollars to publish in their papers. I've not been able to publish any of those. Okay. Due to the fee attached to them, mm, you know. Mm. But all others that their fees are moderate and uh, online, and they also have high impact. Yeah. They've been around for a couple of years. I publish in those. Okay. And I look forward to the time I also publish in all those top publishers. I'm talking about Elsevier, Science and Direct. My, my, fr my friend, I tell you, if you just do all the small things I just told you, like publishing the, in daily newspapers, going going out and and doing these public talks and whatever, if you do, if you start doing that, you will definitely, definitely be able to do this you see it's a it's a, okay. it's a it's a gradual process okay yes yes if if you do all this in five years you'll be able to publish in one of these big big journals and people around the world will actually start reading all the great work you're doing and then you'll be able to do more yeah yeah see? so this this are, these are the things you know so tell me, tell me, you, you just, you mentioned that uh, labs, 
investing in, in labs is uh, is not happening. What, what kind of labs do we have at the moment for for scientific scientific research that have the the best equipment? Well, in the school where I'm working, the University of Lagos, yeah. The, the VCs, the past VCs and the current one, they've, they've really tried, yeah. you know. They tried to bring about um, equipment to furnish. Yeah. We have different type of laboratories right now. Okay, in Uni that's Life. good. That we can carry out research um, work. Although you still need to go out, you know, of the country to do more sophisticated you know, work. Yes, you, if you want to do more sophisticated work, you need to go out of the country. Mm. You need to go out of the country. But for the um, normal, average scientific work, you can do that in mm. the university environment. Yeah. Mm. Well, see, in truth is that, uh, yes, even in the, in the, in the, develop, in the developed world, the commercial scientific research laboratories have the best equipment, but the university's environment themselves have some of the best equipment in the world. Look at the, 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 the vaccine, uh, which was, which was uh, done in, 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 uh, in Oxford. So if the if the, the school didn't have the the, the equipment, the equipment do, that, yes. do that no see yeah so you're right school schools schools should have especially the big schools should have all this equipment and and maybe they should have a, a collaboration with with other labs you know where they yes. can they can do uh, work you know. So yes, this, yes. this is something we need to, we need to work on. This is something we yes. need to work on. You know, it's, in the, fact, that's what um, Unilag is doing now. Unilag is kind of pushing us out to go and get collaborations. Yeah, yeah. collaborate with others and get grants. It's kind of making it mandatory for us now. You mm. just have to go and get grants, and that means you have to collaborate with people. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. We are that's the level we are at now. We want us we want us to go out there and collaborations, work with people. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Yeah. That's it's good. Well, we're we're we're, we're taking it a, a, a step maybe a little bit slow, but we are we are we're we are getting there. We are getting there. So uh you 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 need grants okay uh and you need to well for you you you, you are still young very young you still have a another <laughs> another, 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 another 30 years yes the the last span of people these days uh you still have a, another 30 years of of work <laughs> So, so, so you, you, you still need that. You, you, you still need to, to grow your career, you know? So tell me what, uh, what kind of uh, research do you think uh, you might get into and uh, that you might need uh, grants to help you push it forward? Okay, like um, a proposal I have right now with me that I want to work on and I'm trying to get application for grants for. Yeah. I looked around Nigerian environments and I'm um, looking at how to bring about a solution to one of the environmental problems that we have. And that's the issue of plastic pollution. Yeah, okay. We have lots of plastics in Nigeria that are pollutants. Yeah. They are, they are everywhere. The debris in our oceans now, yeah. mm -hmm. lots of them. You know, they are not degradable, you know. So we have a lot of 
we have a, a lot of problems in Nigeria, in Lagos State particularly, uh, of plastic pollution. So I'm looking at a, a, a research work that will bring about a proposal developing a protocol for degradation of plastic pollutants. Ooh, ooh, ooh. interesting. Degrading them in such a way that they will no longer litter our mm. environment. Mm. Well, and then, and then um, we'll have a cleanup of our ocean, yeah. our marine environments, our mm. land environment, and when we we'll find, and then we'll find a way of how to use this protocol on a large scale. Yeah. Okay. That the government will be able to buy into it. Yeah. Okay. And um, it will well, help reducing. Okay. The uh, ha have you have you checked out what is going on in developed countries about that? Because plastics, uh, plastic uh, pollution or, or, or plastic pollution in rivers and the sea is is a a a worldwide issue okay issue and, yeah. I, and yeah. I know and I know that in the western world they are doing a lot of work with this okay and uh, in fact there's there's a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurial solutions okay to to to, re to reduce or even eliminate the bigger yes plastics okay that that yes. that the issue of a mi microplastic is something that uh, we we, yes. we, may, we may never have a, a solution to because the 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 size is so small yes. that uh, fishes and other marine uh, animals but, are, are, yes. are ingesting them, okay? Yes. But the bigger, the bigger plastics, there are so many uh, already established protocols and businesses that are working on them. Now, if, if you, you have a, a solution that's is not or not not already in the market, then you can bring it to some of these uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, ventures, and then they might fund it. Okay, if if you can show them that hey, what I have, my solution might save you money, my solution might uh, be more environmental uh, friendly than yours hey i'm sure they can they can buy into that i don't i don't know i'm just i'm just talking <laughs> I, 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 I don't i don't know i don't know anything you know i'm just uh, i'm just talking for my for my head <laughs> actually in nigeria lagos state particularly we have this problem mm. the government has not found a solution to it there was a time they introduced them um, incinerators long ago but um one that, 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 will, that, will, that will come that will come out that will not produce a lot of more more chemical pollutants yes yeah. uh, yes air pollutants okay so that fizzles out then also introduce um waste to wealth they will employ people to go and start picking up um, all these pet bottles from the floor for them and give them money but that also fizzled out. Well, see, Something came out of it. The, the, the reason why it fizzles out is that it's government. See, now let me let me let me state it, state this clearly. Market-driven solutions are better than government funding everything. Okay. Now, when it comes to extreme capital capitalism, I'm not into. But I, 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 I have come to the realization that uh, market-driven solution, okay, are better for a lot of things, okay. Now, when it comes to picking plastics everywhere, if there was a a market-driven solution, 
that you can pick the bottles and then convert them into something else who that will pay for the for the for the for the picking and the conversion it will work and and our young our young people need to get into this this thing again that's why we need uh, our young people to understand and buy into science because mm -hmm. uh, yes yeah, yes see see until people buy into science they will not come up with those with these drastic and interesting solutions for problems because all of them need a lot of innovative thinking and science is the is the best way to develop that those kind of innovative thinking you know so yeah yeah you know so yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's a problem that is is big it's huge one it's a huge one so if you have a solution that will reduce the problem you get funding but then uh, you, you you need you first you need to make sure it, it's better than the solution that is already in the market see that's 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 part of the of the market driven solution <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, you're right you know uh so let me let me let me ask you my 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 last question which i like to ask my my guests what as a scientist okay what is your vision for science education and science science practice okay in africa in the next 20 30 years Well, as a scientist, I would like to see all African countries being as developed in science yes. as our uh, developed countries. Okay. You know, I would love to see our governments in um, African countries allocating a reasonable portion of the budget to science. Mm. I would like to see the government encouraging scientists in all ways, okay. in all aspects. Okay. I would like to see less of the brain drain. Okay. Lesser people dumping their countries to go out overseas to get jobs. Mm. I would like to see a better economic situation that will make graduates step back and work for their country. Okay. So that's my vision. Okay. For that's that's a that's a great great vision. Okay. Mm -hmm. I and then I agree with most of them. I say I say most because I know I know that uh, governments cannot fund the most important scientific discoveries that Africa need to develop, okay? The government okay. Cannot, cannot fund it. The, the government doesn't have enough cool. money, enough money, money to fund it, okay? okay. So that's where okay. we need market-driven solutions, okay? Yes. And, and all these things you, 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 you want, okay, will only happen if at the at the lower levels in schools people get into science more people at an early age at, and, mm. and at, at an early age okay i'm not just saying studying do uh, 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 math uh, physics uh, chemistry biology in secondary school no 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 yes that's 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 the the, the work they do but i want until children youths get into the, the 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 thinking the thinking of a scientist at an early age asking mm, questions yes see, see science is about asking questions yeah. and then going out to explore to 
to find the answer to those questions. Yes, yeah, investigate, yeah. That's it. And we lose that very early in the life of young Africans. I won't, I won't even mention the reason, the reasons why I think we lose it, but uh, it's, it's something that, that many Africans will fight me if I say, okay? But, but they know, and I, you know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we talk about that later, okay? So, but the point is this. Yes, all these things you, you wish we have will happen. Will happen as long as scientists, the scientists we have currently start doing the job that they should do. I know these things are not uh, very easy, especially for you as a as a professor of science in the university, you need funding, yes. But you, you, you only have the funding if your work, the, your, if the public and companies and organizations and governments realize the enormity and the importance of your work. And they will only see that if your work impacts more people around yeah. the society. So that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know? You're right. Yeah. All right. Tundu. Thank you so much, Akine. Mm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for being here. All right. Uh, I'm so happy to see you and talk to you after yeah. after after over 20, 25 years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. Thank you very much for Thank being here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All Later. Right. Take care. Bye. Um, bye. <laughs>Listen or watch more episodes of Think Big for Africa podcast with new guests every week. Subscribe to ensure that you are notified whenever new episodes are available.